Yo, what's up, my brother? What's up, my sister? This is your boy, Oscar Ntege, again with yet another amazing tutorial. Guys, guess what today? If you are a beauty retoucher, a makeup artist who shoots or edits your own photos, I would love to take this opportunity to congratulate you for making it here. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to touch up makeup in Photoshop. You're going to learn how to retouch makeup and make it more precise and neat using Photoshop. We shall go deep into editing eye makeup, just like you see it here. And in general, we are going to learn how to fix makeup. If you're a beauty retoucher, a beauty photographer, this is an opportunity for you to up your game so that you attract more clients so that you make more money remember i remember back in 2015 when i had just started doing beauty shots i searched around i never found anything online that comprehensively uh, explained or taught these things it was through try and error collaboration with several makeup artists over years that i learned these particular techniques that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share these techniques with you in the simplest way that there is. I will explain these things to you like I'm explaining to a five-year-old. Without further ado, let us dive into this. Oh, before we get into this, this image, by the way, was taken by a very, very super talented photographer. His name is Derek of DreamWorks Photography. He does very awesome images. And if you are a beginner photographer, I would think, or a beginner retouch and need some inspiration, you should check out his Instagram. I'll leave the link to his Instagram in the bio below and i'm also going to share the raw image of this so that you can also follow along you can click onto the time codes if you want to skip through the different the different uh, uh, sections that i'm going to teach first of all we are going to first learn how to repair when you look at this particular face you see the foundation is not very precise when you look like for example at this particular age there is we see yes there is fa there is no foundation but here we are seeing traces of foundation here then when you look at this particular part the concealer really is way off it is not similar to what we see on the other part of the skin so we're going to learn how to match this in my opinion if you're a makeup artist and you're watching this it is usually better you use foundation on the upper pie part of the eyebrow instead of using concealer because concealer seems tends to be very very light and it makes the eyebrow appear as if it is uh, floating right on top so it is better when you're concealing the eyebrow you you use foundation that you've used on the other parts of the skin when you look at this the foundation is not really precise and we need to make this whole thing precise uh, about the concealer now when you look at this now look at this particular edge here this the concealer still is not when you see you can see traces of the brushes that the concealer passed around this particular area now the makeup artist i think intended to make this straight we're going to make this straight and also make these seamlessly bend blend in we're going to make this particular mascara rather eyeliner this also more precise so that the wing is crisp and very very clear we're going to improve on to the contouring yeah that is the other thing we are going to do then we are going to emphasize the nose highlight so that it pops then when you look at the lips the lipstick the she wanted to do i think a nude lipstick just like you see here but still we are seeing imprecision on the lip so look at this particular zone when you look there is foundation here and there is no foundation here all these are the things that we are going to correct now look at this particular part and look at the neck we need to match the colors of where the foundation was applied and where it wasn't so if you're a photographer and you do a lot of beauty shots i would highly advise you you tell your makeup artist to apply a bit of foundation in the neck area so that you have 
more of matching colors. Let us look at the blush. When you look at the blush here, you see it is a bit reddish and uh, here you still see that there are brush strokes that passed. So we need to make this more seamless and also the highlighter more pop. Without further ado, uh, enough with the chit chatting. Let us dive into this now. The first thing we're going to do, we're first going to work on the foundation part. Yep. Okay, we are going to use a technique called frequency separation to work on those particular skin tones. So, excuse me. So we're going to duplicate this layer twice, just like that by dragging it here. Then we are going to name this tones and we are going to rename this textures. Now, this is how frequency separation works. Well, I explain it, but uh, it is really worth repeating if you're new to this channel and most probably if this is the first video you've watched here on this particular channel. Now, the, the technique of frequency separation, what it does basically, it gives you an opportunity to work on the colors of an image separately and also work on the textures of an image on a different layer. Basically, look at it as uh, music. Da? Look at it as a song where you decide to put the instrument on its own and leave the vocals on its own. Now, this is what we are going to do. So it gives a producer or music producer an opportunity to work on the vocals of the song alone and all of the, so of the song of rather the singer, the vocals alone, and also work on the instrumental as an instrumental all alone. So this is exactly what we are going to do. It is basically going to be the same images, image, but the only difference is going to be the separation of the frequencies. The frequencies in this case are the textures and the tones. This is how we are going to do it. We are going to first remove and see this and select the tonal layer. So you come here at filter, you say blah, Gaussian blah. Yeah. And then you're going to blur out everything that we want to maintain in the final image. Now, the technique we are going to use is uh, we are going to subtract the texture, all the texture that is in this tonal layer and transfer it up onto the texture layer here. So basically, we are going to steal all the texture that is here and put it in this particular texture layer. This is how we're going to do it. So everything that we want to maintain in this in, in the final image, in the texture image, we are going to have to blur it out. Let us do this. So you come and blur it out like, I don't want you to cram dig it. Yeah, I just want you to understand how the technique works. Because when you cram dig it, uh, and you try it on a different image that is not the same pixels as this one, you won't get similar results. My goal is for you is to understand. So everything we have blurred out here is going to resurface here. So if you want to have, if you want to have maybe not have all these textures, we shall give it a very, very light blur, but we want to maintain all these beautiful textures of the skin in the final piece. So you come and blur it out. You don't blur it out to a level that you, she goes beyond identity. You blur it out in a way that you no, can no longer see that the skin gets smooth. Just look at the skin. I think that's really enough for me. So you come here in the upper texture layer. You select it. You come here and say image, apply. Remember we said we are subtracting the textures of this tonal layer. So since we are doing that here at source, you come and rather here at layer, you come and select the tones layer. And remember, we are subtracting, we are stealing texture, not multiplying, but subtracting. Yeah, you come and say subtract. So keep the scale at two, keep the offset at 1.8. Your image is supposed to look like this. If it doesn't look like this, please go back and watch this video from the beginning. That is why I told you, you should not skip through this video, but watch every step of the way. So the next thing we are going to do, we are just going to come here and say, okay. So we are going to change the blending mode here from normal and put it to linear light. 
just like that. So let us just put these in a group and I show you what I was talking about. Now, when you when I remove and this, you will see that there is no difference because this image here in a group and this one are the same, but the only difference is that we have separated the layer that the textures from the tones in this particular image, right? Okay, hope I'm not very fast. Let us get to this. So now what we are going to do, we are going to begin now working on the foundation, yep. Okay, let's do this. Oops, I'm pressing F on my keyboard so that uh, I have this whole thing feel my screen. Uh, let me close this so that I get more working space. So you come get the lasso tool. Uh, you make sure the feather here is at around 18, in between 18 and 35. And then you come and begin working on the tones like that filter, then you come and say blah. So this is how it works. You come and blah it out until you see the foundation is precise. See? But don't take it overboard. When you take it overboard, it is going to give you that flat look that most, most pictures I see on Instagram usually have. So what you do, you come and do it in such a way that really it doesn't go overboard. Now, I think this is enough. You make sure you don't lose out on the highlights when you're doing it. This is enough for me, yeah. Then you come also here, you select that. Still, you come around this, the cheekbone area. You press Ctrl F on your keyboard. If you're using a latest version of uh, Photoshop, you press Alt Ctrl and F to repeat the filter. Seal, the same applies here. You come and select over here, like that. You still come. Basically, what we are doing here is we are now making the foundation more precise. That is exactly what we are trying to do here. And when you're making these selections, you make sure you, you select according to the shape of the part you're editing. I wouldn't expect you to make a selection that looks like this when you are really trying to work on the nose area. Yeah, so you come and still do the same like that. You come also here, that, we come into the neck area, you edit that right there. You know, I'm going to be fast doing this because really, I don't want the video to be so long. I've done lots and lots of videos on frequency separation. Now, let us, I want your attention here on this. Now, when you look at this particular image, this particular part here, you see the makeup is not very precise. So we're just going to come and select the blue zone like here. And then press Ctrl F and repeat the filter. We come still here. Like that. Now upper part here, like that, and then still here. Okay, now when you when I press Ctrl F, you see how this white really comes in? Now that tells you it is too much. So you come back to the filter, blah, and just, you know, come and pump it down a bit, you know? Now, I'll come on and also do the same over the arm area, just here, just like that. So the next thing we are going to do, we are now going to work on the texture part of the image. So what you do, you come and select the texture part and above it, we are going to create a black and white layer, a black and white help layer, just to help us uh, pick out so that we see the pimples, so that the pimples all come on top of the 
image. So what you do, you create a black and white layer here, and then you crush the reds down. You bring the reds down. You see how all the pimples come on top? Now, this helps us expose all the blemishes and all the things that we are supposed to get rid of in the texture layer. So we're going to undo it and select the texture layer. And then we are going to get uh, our spot healing tool. Yep. Here, and then just come and begin brushing off. Oops. Sorry. Okay, let us do this. We, we, we were selecting the black and white layer. That's why I got that. So we make sure this texture layer is selected. So we come and begin right there. Okay, now we are going to select the texture layer and get our clone stamp. Make sure the flow and opacity is at 100 and come onto the texture layer. And then we begin removing. The way that this particular tool works, you press Alt on your key, Alt on your keyboard, then you click so that you select a part with no pimple, then just cover it, click to where you want to cover, just like that. I, I use the clone stamp mostly because it is basically like a copy and paste thing. Basically, I'm um, copying and pasting texture from one part to another. That is why I use the clone stamp. Really, it takes a bit of time, but I'm not going to take a lot of time really onto this. I'm just going to remove the ones that are overly pronounced. But if you're doing typically high-end retouching, this process, basically, a good a picture would take you a good four hours if you're doing um, high-end retouching. And there are certain things really I, I can't share on YouTube because really they take a lot of time. And uh, I can only, I think I would share them in the course, in my, in the upcoming course that I'm preparing for you guys, where I share the details of, of this high-end retouching, you know, where I go into full details. That, that, that is the course that can really, really help you better your retouching and to a level that you can retouch anything and begin making money there and then without just juggling through techniques and the like. I'm preparing something really awesome for you, my people, so that you get, you get something in a more simplified way without me having to worry about... Uh, about wasting really a lot of time because I can't really sit for four hours doing a full image on YouTube and you know that is a lot of time but what I can do for you I'm preparing for you guys a course that is really going to help many photographers many of you to better your photography game not basically technique but something that is going to help you better your business as a photographer the techniques that I use you know, it is something that is going to be amazing, that is going to change lives. It is just an opportunity, a one-time opportunity. Anyway, all in all, I'm trying to say is uh, you, you just have to click through and remove all this stuff. So let us remove this and see where we are. Uh, come also remove these dark... At the end of the day, we don't want to get rid of all the textures, really. I, I saw some things in her hair here that I really didn't like. You know, I think it was foundation that got stuck. These white things here, the blue that stuff. When you look around this area, you see now we need to get rid of that particular thing that shows that, hey, there is a demarcation between you know, where the foundation went and where the foundation didn't go. So we just need to get rid of all this stuff, like... Well, okay, I, I'm forgetting I'm doing a YouTube tutorial where I even go into intricate details. And yet I don't want the video to be so long. Yeah. Because people usually complain that I talk so much. But at the end of the day, my goal is to 
help beginners this uh, i did not come to youtube to help people who have already mastered i only came to help people who are still struggling that's why i take the tutorials very very slow my my target audience is helping people who are in a position that i was in back then when i knew nothing so that i can uplift them like so that i can help them grow that is my intention i did not come here for masters so if you're a master and watching this most probably you are watching a wrong video yeah and you it is like that okay now let us see where we are right now look at the before and now look at the after look at the before look at the after now we have worked on that on the foundation and we have well aligned it now we are going to work on this particular makeup eye makeup and enhance it but we can do that in the tones yeah when when i say tones i mean this particular layer so we're going to make this blue thick and we're going to come and feel these spaces here in the blue makeup here the blue makeup this orange goldish makeup is also going to be enhanced in this particular stage we're going to enhance the mascara so this is how we're going to do it yeah you're going to come here on the tones layer and create a new layer in between we're going to name this layer makeup let us name it makeup enhance enhancements yep yeah? just for our guide so we're going to come get the brush tool yeah make sure the opacity and flow is at 100 then we make sure the brush is small it's rather soft and then we are going to press get your brush tool press alt on your keyboard to get the color and then we're going to come and paint over here right here we paint over there we also come with the same color and then still we paint over here just like that then we're going to come and say okay and change the blending mode to let us see soft light now this is what soft light does to the eye see that's the before and that's the after so what we are going to do now we are going to come and we create like a very very straight line here so that we don't have it blending through we want we shall have the the yellow the orange blend through yeah but we won't have this you know blend into this here we are going to have just like a straight line so you just come get your pen tool you come here and then you if you don't know how the pen tool works you click at this yeah point there click at that particular end don't leave the mouse button still hold the mouse button down and then just we we go around until that line gets the curve that you want then you press alt on your keyboard and then click back so that you start another point and click to the next point don't leave the mouse button again we go move the mouse around until you have it curve in the best way then click back and then you come here right there you do the same thing so you come still right here remember we are following now the line of the mascara right there you come still at that point and then you select that again and then you come do the same thing here there and yes and then you say make selection yeah we're going to feather this at around two yeah this depends really on the size of the image so we're going to get our clone stamp here and then we come you make sure it's current layer that is selected here and then you come press alt and then just begin cloning over there
so that we have it more precise. I, I feel we need to have now, since this this is a bit, this color is brighter than what is here, so we're going to come and change the blending mode here and make it darken so that we get more contrast between this upper golden eye, eye, eye shadow to this blue. So you come and still press Alt and then you come and, you know, you clone over there just like that. So you clone until you get to the edge, just like. Same applies here, you come and you clone over here. So here, since we are, we want to create contrast between a dark part, which is the mascara and rather the, eye, the eyeliner and the blue, we shall come and change the blending mode to lighten. The trick is just looking at the color that is next to it and you do the opposite of what hope that makes sense if i have a i had a, a lighter color here than the blue i would use uh darken blending mode but since i have a black color here i'll use the light and blending mode so i come press alt down and then come and just paint over same applies here so i'm going to come and select the and deselect this so let us see what we have look at this look at the before and look at the after so we're going to do the same thing over this eye here yeah we still get our pen tool right here place it at that point and then you come place it at the next point you come here again do that and then we come over here, come, do that, do that, and then right there, then you right click and say, make selection. And then we say we feather still at two. You come with your clone stamp and then press. Remember this color is brighter than this. So we are going to say darken so that we create more contrast at the age where this makeup really meets. So you come and say this, then you paint over here like that. Now here we are, since we are coming towards the dark zones, we're going to come here and change the blending mode to lighten so that we have more contrast between the eyeliner and the eyeshadow. You come and just lighten, just like that. Uh, the reason as to why we use soft light is to give us the opportunity to maintain the textures, uh, wings and all this stuff. So you come and deselect right here. So now let us look at this again. Yeah, that's the before, that's the after, the before, the after. So we're now going to work on that particular color, this particular eyeshadow so that it blends up there. So we are going, it's also going to still select the tonal layer and then just create this down. So we are going to name this golden. Golden. Eye. Shadow just to appear organized. So you make sure it is below the blue area. So you're going to come and get your brush tool here. Then you, you, you press Alt on your keyboard and color pick here like that. And then you paint over. You don't mind this, we are going to find a way of, uh, make sure you're painting with a soft brush. Because remember, we just want it to, you know, to blend into the other part. You still come here and do the same thing. Just like that. So we're going to come here and change the blending mode here to soft light still. Yeah, see? so. Since we are changing it to soft light, now we're going to come over here. Now we're going to come here and create like a layer mask just right here. 
we are going now one thing you have to understand is that black hides and white reveals so this is what we are going to do you make sure that layer mask is selected you come you press x on your keyboard or you can click over here to swap or press x on your keyboard just to swap the colors you make sure black is on top and then you just come and you know brush this off like that You still come do the same thing over here you brush it off now what we have done here is uh, we have one made the makeup pop see let us just put these in a in a group just for you to to see what i'm talking about see the before and see the after we have made one the makeup very very precise now our next thing is we are now going to work on the we shall come back to working on the foundation and or rather on the mascara and straightening it out that is going to be one of the last things you're going to do so the next thing we are going to do now we're going to work on the lips here yeah that is what we are going to do here so we are still going to come select the tonal layer and here we select we create another layer and name this lips yeah still remember we are we are trying to imitate the makeup the goal is not to change the kind of makeup they did on her the goal here is to enhance the makeup that already exists when you look at this she was giving her a nude lip but most probably she did not have those expensive products like I, would, I don't want to say brands here but that is why makeup keeps falling off and uh, yeah but if it was maybe an expensive brand it would uh, have stuck on but since we didn't have that luxury we are going to come here press alt on your keyboard here and then we come and paint over that nude makeup all over the lip just like that so basically the goal is choosing a general color over the lip just like that right there and then we're going to come and change the blending mode again here to soft light yeah to soft light i think so what we are going to do we are going to just come here onto the texture layer and then we try to let us just come and change back this to normal we get our clone stamp yeah and then we try to clone out certain parts of the lips that is on the text texture layer that make the lips look overly dry press hold like that you know these very very many highlights that these white things so we're going to come back here onto the tonal layer right here and then we're going to get our clone stamp reduce the opacity and flow as well to 50 52 and 30 then you come and try to clone all this stuff out Oops, sorry so we're going to just come and create just a, a new layer just above here and we're going to name this lip blending lip blending and then we get our brush tool here right here and then we just come and try painting in certain parts yeah you don't have to take it really overboard just little by little so we are going to make the lips of that we're going to make actually the edges of the lips more precise in the 
upcoming steps right ahead. So now let us look at where we've come from and where we are right now. Yeah. Now here is the before and here is the after. Here is the before, here is the after. Before and after. So now the next thing we are going to do now, we're going to do what they call contouring. Now contouring is the process by which uh, makeup artists Oh, before we go into contouring, let us first work on this, these edges of the foundation that really didn't come out nice. So you come here onto the tonal layer right here and get your pen tool here. You make sure it, it passes over the edge of the eyebrow, just there, right there, and right there. Then you select that particular part, make selection. We're going to make the feather here at, at around three because we don't want it, we want it to blend into the skin basically. Yeah, so you get your clone stamp. Let us reduce the opacity and flow here. And then you come and select this particular part here and then just come and you clone over this particular now, we don't want it to be so bright, so let us come and say darken here so that we darken the edges a bit. So we're going to come and right click, select inverse. Then we are going to come over here and then we come to the eyebrow zone and then we just extend, we clone over that particular, let us increase the opacity and flow just so that we don't overly delay this tutorial like, like that. So you come and deselect, see how precise we've made the eyebrow. So the next thing we are going to do, we are now going to work on the lower part of the eyebrow. Yeah. Here we want, you come select this at that point where the eyebrow starts, and then you come and place your clone stamp, rather your pen tool around that area. Then you still place this at the edge, and then you come here. We select this in and make selection. We are still going to feather it at three. So you come, get your clone stamp here. Now, here we want this particular part bright because it is next to something dark. So we shall come here and say lighten. So you come here and just come and still here you clone. I mean, how, how beautiful is that, guys? Oops, you make sure you clone from that particular zone around here. So see how we've made this precise, but we have a challenge here. We have, this part is not precise enough. So this is where you get our lasso tool here. And then we select this particular part. And then we say filter, blah. And you say Gaussian blah. And you, you blah it out. So we shall come on the texture layer here. And then we try to clone out certain things. Oops, we shall keep it at normal. Then we try to clone out this. So we are still going to do the same thing for the mascara right here. You come, get to that point and come to the edge where you want it to carve out, just like that. And then we bring it all the way here, all the way there and then Yeah. 
here until okay I, I don't know she was not very precise with her wing but uh, I'll just extend it a bit like that so you come and say make selection Th this one since it is very very precise I usually love keeping it at around two so that the feather is not so heavy uh, still we make we make sure it is the tonal layer that is selected and then you come with your clone stamp here remember we want this to be dark so we're going to come and say darken we select here and then you just come at the edge here and then you darken So I'm, the darken really is not giving me how I would want it. Is it is still leaving an edge? So I'll come and here here and say no more. Yeah, so that I just clone here and then I just come and clone the actual. So since it's not giving me really exactly what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to come here and right click and say layer via copy. Yeah, so that I copy these particular tones here and uh, press Ctrl L on my keyboard and I just darken these particular zones individually. You know, by me saying layer via copy, it's me saying I just want only that particular part of so that I darken it to my test. Yeah, but before we go there, let me first cancel and go back a few steps. Yeah, then I'm just going to first come and clean off this by lightening it up. So I'll just come right click and select inverse. So I come here and press Alt Control, then come here and say lighten here and then Oops, I'll reduce the opacity so that it doesn't go overboard. Here, lighten, and then I just clone over the edges. The, the goal of this is to leave like a demarcation of, you know, of precision so that when somebody looks at the makeup, they're like, wow. Yeah, the makeup artist really did a beautiful job, you know? So now we have finished. Let me just come here and still do the same over the edges so that I have, yeah. Now the, the next thing we are going to do, let me let me just have this uh, this part also selected so that we, we these particular eyes both have the same color in terms of mascara contrast and uh, eyeliner contrast and still same thing right here then i would say make selection so i'm just going to add to selection oops i'll say make selection then say add Ooh, whatever oh sorry i'll come and just select inverse first yeah then i just come here with my pen tool and say select make selection and then i say add selection so i'll still come here and uh, just still do my make sure it's back and selected here just like that yeah see now as you're seeing here, the mascara is not as dark as we want it. So what are we going to do? We're going to come, get a selection tool, right click and say layer via copy so that we create a copy of this, just this color of the mascara on its own layer right there. And we're going to name this, is it mascara? No, it's eyeliner, eyeliner. We're going to call it eyeliner just right there so we're going to press ctrl l and we just control the levels of this so that it is dark to our test 
we don't want it to take it so black no we we, we want it to keep it so a bit you know contrasty to a level that we don't lose out on the skin texture where we can still see the highlights you know but for the youtube video i'm going to make it a little bit dark because you guys are watching from different screens some of you are watching from tvs others are watching from uh the different yep so the next thing we are going to do let us work on this particular eyebrow now yep though this one doesn't have a lot of really work so we come here still do the same thing click at that point click at the last point there then we come at this point that and then we make our selection we still feather this at three uh, remember we said we are going to lighten come lighten and then you come here and say t -t 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 -t, you clone this out like that Wow, if you're still watching this, if you're still here, I, I, I can tell how much money you're going to make really after learning these techniques. If you're this patient and you're still here up to here, man, I would love to congratulate you. Girl, I would love to congratulate you. Like the, the, these are going to be, these minutes are going to be worth. Every second here is going to be worth. So let us select this up part of the eyebrow as well, just like that. Oops. Then right click, we say make selection. We are still feathering at three. We get our clone stamp. Yeah, we are going to keep this at normal and we come and we clone in all this foundation. Yeah. Remember to tell your makeup artist to use foundation on the top part of the eyebrow instead of using concealer. Concealer should only be used on the lower part of the eye because when they use it on the top, top part of the eye, basically the eyebrow looks like it is floating on somebody's face. It doesn't look like it's part of somebody's face. So this is the trouble we go through when we are doing post-production. So let us just look at what we have this is the before and that is the after, the before and after. So the next thing we are going to do, we are now going to do what they call contouring. The makeup artists call it contouring. In photography, we call it global burning and dodging. Yep. So here's what we're going to do. This time around, we are just going to use curves when doing this. You come here and you say curves and then we are going to name this one burn. Yep, we're going to duplicate this again and we're going to name the upper one Doge. Yep, so on this particular on this particular one, you just double click here. We're just going to come and crush all the shadows down. Yeah, just like that. Yep, and press Control I to invert and we're going to come here on this upper one and enhance Oops. Oh, sorry, we, we hadn't showed it. So we come select it and then we enhance all that. And then we press Control I. So remember, we're going to still use this. This is like now layer masking. So we're going to come here and we begin doing our burning and dodging. Yeah, uh, let me just give you a brief a breakthrough of what we are exactly we are going to do and what makeup artists usually intend to do. Basically, it's much more about creating triangles in the face. Uh, I'm going to give you a guide. Now, I'm going to use uh, uh, red just as a guide to show you the kinds of triangles that makeup artists usually want to create. The triangles are imitations of what they call a beauty mask. Now, if you don't know what a beauty mask is, a beauty mask is something that was invented by uh, Da Vinci and some other guy uh, where, I don't know how to explain it, but I have a video that explains all that stuff in, uh, oh, it's a Luganda video, it's in vernacular, but I'll do an English video on it one day. Uh, basically, it, it helps you 
It is how the human eye perceives beauty. It is what rate, what gauges beauty standards if you're doing beauty shots. So basically, you create like a triangle around there. There is a triangle around that area. We have another long triangle around that area. We have a triangle around that area. So basically, all where, wherever you see triangles, these, I'm going to come and dodge most of these parts here at, especially, you know, all these parts I'm going to dodge where you see these triangles. I'm also going to dodge around that area in still a triangular way, all that stuff. Yeah, then let me just use blue to show where I'm going to burn. Yeah, now for burning, definitely these areas around, you know, the triangles, all these I'm going to, to burn these particular areas. Yeah, though modern makeup usually because it is not a straight picture, basically the triangle would have been if it was a straight picture, the triangle would have been like this. But since it is she has a chisel, we need to emphasize this chisel more. So we are going to burn this in and then create that kind of illusion. We are going to burn this in, you know. The goal is to create more depth in the whole face so that the face doesn't look flat. You know, when you use uh, the frequency separation technique, most of the times a lot and lots of uh, images I see on Instagram, they have that particular flat look. They use frequency separation and they don't burn or dodge their images. So images come off to look very, very flat. And that is what we are trying to avoid for you, my fans here. By the way, if you've not yet subscribed, you should click the subscribe button right now. So let us get into this. I'll just try to delete this. So the next thing we are going to do, we're going to come here and begin burning. So we shall reduce the opacity and reduce the flow right there. And so let us begin burning. So we come, remember I told you the parts you're going to burn. You make sure it's white selected here. And then you come, we begin burning. Like that. I'm going to make it very fast, but if you we chisel her in, we chisel her right there. We burn at the edges so that her face is fully bracketed from inside, just like that. We are, we are also going to burn a little bit. Remember when we applied the other color, we somehow flattened some parts of the eye. So we come and burn the eyeshadow in. And we also burn it towards the edges here so that we give it more depth and dimension. Same applies here. Uh, if I think if you're a makeup artist, um, um, I, I can tell you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. I think this really resonates with you. I don't know. I, 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 I sense that the, the makeup artists that were watching my video. So I thought I would do really some video for you guys. So we come here as well on the dodge layer and we do some highlighting. Yep. Right there. You come still here, use a big brush. Avoid using very small brushes because small brushes usually instead create like holes in the whole picture. So we're going to come also dodge the forehead so that it pops right there. So we come and also dodge on this part of the eye so that we create more depth. Usually they put concealer around that area. So we shall also come and highlight it more just like that and then I, I didn't even match colors of the neck but uh, we shall see it in the next tutorial or oh, I'll leave a link of how we do it in just up there uh, just up there so basically that is roughly what we do let me put this in group so that you see that is the before and that is the after the before and after i had promised you that we are going to do something where we are going to work on the lips you know so that we have them looking neater than this so this is what we're going to do we're going to press ctrl alt shift e 
to create a screenshot of the whole image and then of all these effects. And then we just come right here with our lasso tool. We shall keep it at zero, the feather at zero. And we are going to come here and uh, we select the lips, we say layer via copy. Prayer. And then we shall delete this because you only needed the lips and we shall come and uh, come, duplicate this. So you come and say, okay, let us say lower. We are going to come and rename this upper. Yeah, we're going to work on the lipstick basically. So you come and say uh, filter blah, like we did on frequency separation. Here, yeah. Gaussian blah. Don't apply it for too much. Then you come here on image, apply image. So remember, we are subtracting texture from here. You say lower. And then you say, okay, then we come here and say linear light. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to come and select all around the lip area, just like that. I don't like selecting the whole lip. I usually keep it with make selection, I'll keep the feather at three, then come with our clone stamp here and we say darken. And then I'll re increase the opacity and flow here so that um, it's very, very fast. Darken just like that. So you just paint over the edges just like I don't mind this color really passing through because at the end of the day, we are doing like what they call lip contouring so that we have more depth end. So I'll just come here, right click, select inverse. You get this particular tool, you say lighten here and then come here, click here and then we paint these back in so that we get that precise demarcation between the ducks and the lights, just like that. See, see how that how precise that is. So we come here on the next thing and then we still do the same thing. We make the same selection around here. Oops. Make selection, feather still at three, you come here, you come and say darken, press this, and then over the edges, paint over the edges with darken. Remember, we are doing like lip contouring. Uh, you select inverse, you come here, you say lighten, and then over the edge and you lighten. It's a nude lip, but still it needs a bit of demarcation so that it doesn't just blend in. You know, imagine you're doing uh, an advert for a lipstick or something, you know, people need to see. So you can't do the same thing over the lower lip just here. Usually this, I don't take it far towards that side. Make selection. I'll keep it at three get the old clone stamp, turn it to darken, hold, and then over paint over the edges, like that. Yeah, and then come, right click, select inverse, get your clone stamp, turn it to lighten, press this, and then over the edges, just like that. Uh, 
Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to come onto this particular tonal layer. Let us zoom this in just a little bit. Then we're going to get the lasso tool. Let us feather this at around 18. And then we come and make a selection right there. Of course, not distorting the shape of the lips and come yet blur, caution blur. And then we're going to blur this slightly, not to the way that it gets flat, but to a way that we maintain tones. The goal is to have it, to have the tones more precise then. So you come here, you select this particular part as well, like that. It's a filter, blur. Gaussian blur. Don't over deblur it to lose the demarcation, like the shape of the lip. Just like that. Yeah. Deselect. Yep. And then you're going to come here, put this in a group right there. And then, okay, let us rename these lips just for we are not confused. Uh, this is the ban and dodge. And this is the skin and makeup. So you come here onto the lip layer, you create a layer mask just right, you know, next to it and then get the brush tool. Remember we said black hides, white reveals. So we need to hide this edge here. So you make sure black is on top and then you you raise the opacity and flow. And then we shall just paint over these black edges to get rid of them. Just like, like that. So we have the before, the after, the before and after, before and after. So the next thing we are going to do and which is the last thing, we're going to give her a little bit of shape and you know just give her those chisels and all that the goal is not to change her completely but when you look at this her jawline seems to be falling in we're going to make her lips a little bit more heart shaped and then uh what else i think that's all we're going to do the rest she's just a beautiful black girl let us get into this we press ctrl alt shift e and then we say filter you say liquefy. So we come get our tool. If you're not seeing all these tools, make sure the advanced mode is selected. Uh, the pressure, keep it at around 33. The size really depends on the, on the kind of image you're editing. And we shall just pull this in just a little bit. Basically, we are doing a little bit of sculpting. We shall just come put this in. Uh, let us pull the forehead just a little bit up and maybe pull the ear so that it is. Yeah, so we're going to work on the lips by reducing the brush here so that we have this. It, it looks a bit, uh, you know, bent. So we shall pull this part of the lip here and then we pull this basing on perspective ready. And then we shall raise this a bit and also raise this just a little bit. Uh, also here, the, the, the goal is not to change her, but the, the, the goal is just to give her little enhancements just to make her, you know, a little bit of a player, you know. So let us see. I'll put all these, our edits in a group just here, in a group and I'll name this edit. Let us see where we've come from. Now, this is the before and that is the after. Let me just fit it on screen so that you guys see what we have come. That's the before. This is the after. Before and after. Guys, I think that's that for today. I hope to see you in my next video. If you've really, really loved and enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. And Adiós.